On occasion, you may wish to calculate material volumes for items associated with corridor daylighting. These materials might include things like topsoil, riprap, or seeded grass. In this session, we'll look at a way to calculate materials like these using Civil 3D's Place Lined Material option. Before we get started, let me say that if this is your first time calculating corridor material volumes, I have created a couple introductory videos that walk through the basic workflows. You can see the titles of those videos on screen. You will also find links to the recordings in the description for this video. So, if this is your first time, I recommend watching these recordings first and then come back and watch this one. Okay, having said that, on my screen I have a portion of a proposed roadway design. Let's zoom in and we'll do a quick tour. If I hover, we can see I've got an existing ground surface called EG. Right here, my roadway center line is called Randall Road. This alignment was used to sample a surface profile of the existing ground surface. I have also created a finished grade profile for the center line of the road. You can see that as the profile moves along the alignment, it raises up into an area of fill, and as we continue to move on, it drops down into an area of cut. Let's take a look at the assembly. I'm using an assembly called Randall Road, and I'm using stock subassembly parts. I'm using the Lane Super Elevation AOR lanes for the left and right, and I'm also using this Shoulder Extend All for the left and right. This assembly was used to create this corridor model. I have also generated a top surface for the corridor called Randall Road Top. The one thing I haven't done is create daylights to tie this corridor to the existing ground surface. Let's do that now. I'm going to start by panning over to the assembly, and then I will select it. And from the contextual ribbon, I'll choose Tool Palette. And then from the Tool Palette, I'm going to select the Daylight tab. This gives me access to all the daylights that come out of the box with Civil 3D. Let's take a look at one of these. I'm going to right-click on Daylight Max Width, and I'll come down and choose Help. Using this Help feature is a great way to learn not just about this subassembly, but every subassembly that we get with Civil 3D. In here, we'll see a nice schematic that tells us how this daylight works. We can see that I can assign a dedicated cut and fill slope, and it will honor that slope until such time as the daylight link reaches the max width. Once it hits the max width, it will violate that slope to hold that distance, both in the cut and fill situations. If I drag down, you can see here under parameters, even though this is a relatively simple daylight, there are a lot of options here. If I drag down far enough, you can see that I have the ability to place lined material. Not just one material, but three. And each material that I place, I can assign a slope limit, a depth, and a material name that I could use to pull quantities for these materials. Let's close this. Now, the line material is not just for that subassembly, it's for all of them. If I right click on this daylight subassembly and go to help, this is daylight basin, we can see the schematic. And if I scroll down, you can see those same material options here. Let's close this, we'll grab another. I'll right click on daylight standard and I'll come down and choose help. I apologize, my interface is creeping off screen. This daylight does a lot. If I scroll down, you can see all the parameters, but if I get down far enough, we can see those same material options here. So, we have the lined material available. Let's look at how it works. I'm going to start by selecting the Daylight Max Width subassembly. And then I will snap one of these to the right and left side of my assembly. I can close this tool palette. And I would like to change the properties of both of these. So, let's select each of them and I'll come over to the Properties palette. And if I roll down to the Parameters area, I can see right here is my cut and fill slope. Currently, those are set to 4 to 1 and it's going to hold that slope until the daylight link exceeds 10 feet. I'm going to make this 15 feet for this example, and I'll press tab. If I scroll down further, under place lined material, currently that's set to none. It's turned off by default. If I expand the menu, I can apply the lined material to all links, fill links only, or daylight links. Daylight links, in this case, it would give us the same thing as all links, because there's only one segment or one link. If we had a bench or a ditch, for instance, that had multiple links, this is how I could apply it to just the last link, the one that connects us to the surface. So for this example, we'll go with all, and then here's where I can define my materials down below. Slope limit one, I will type two and press tab. So I'm saying any place where I've got a daylight link that's two to one slope or steeper, I would like a one foot deep material called riprap. Slope limit two, 
will say anything that is 3 to 1 or steeper, at least until it gets to 2 to 1 and becomes riprap. But from 3 to 1 to 2 to 1, I would like a 6 inch thick material or half a foot, and we'll make this topsoil. Now you don't have to create all three materials, you can just get away with one if you want to, but since we have three, I'm going to use three for this example. I'll say everything from 4 to 1 to 3 to 1. I'm going to use a material thickness of 0.25 just so it's visually different, and I'll keep the default name here of seeded grass. Once again, you can create your own materials with your own depths and your own slopes. When I'm finished, I'll press escape. Now that I've applied those, let's update our corridor. I'm going to do that by going to the Modify Ribbon tab. I'll come down and choose Corridor, and then we'll choose Targets. I would like to edit the targets within this region. I'll click, and then in the Targets dialog box, right here under Surfaces, you can see the two daylights that I've added, one on the left and one on the right. I'm going to click to assign them to the existing ground surface. I'll click OK. There we go, let's do one more thing. I am going to select my corridor and I'll come up and choose Rebuild. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape and we'll take a look. So as our corridor moves along the alignment, if you remember, it's coming uphill. Let's pan this back. So here we can see that daylight link coming out until such time as it meets that 15 foot requirement and you can see it's now holding that limit. So it's steepening up the fill slope. Right here is where we crest at the top of the hill and now we're working our way back down. Eventually the daylight link falls inside that 15 foot range. Now we're dropping down into the cut area until we get to a 15 foot daylight link and we can see how it's holding that. Let's pan this over and we'll take a look at the corridor from a section view. I'm going to do that by selecting one of these assembly insertions here at the beginning of the corridor and then from the contextual ribbon I'll choose section editor. This allows me to view the corridor in section, plan, and profile view. I'm going to zoom in on this daylight on the left side, and we can see there's that lined material. This is the one that we called seeded grass. I'm going to zoom out, and we'll kind of center that on screen. And then from the view tools, I'm going to choose zoom to an offset and elevation. It will kind of lock this view on screen. This way, as I step through, we can see the roadway coming up, and the daylight link is going out. Eventually, that's going to hit 15 feet, and then we'll see the slope start to change. There it goes. Once this moves up, as soon as it breaks that 3 to 1 plane, we see the material change. It's thicker now. This is the topsoil. As we continue to step through, the roadway goes up, and eventually this will break the 2 to 1 plane. And when it does, it flips to riprap. We can see that shape change again. We now crest, and as we come down, we can see that cycle back through the three materials. So basically, that's how it works. Let me close this. Remember, those line materials are available on all of the out of the box daylight links. Now that we've seen that, let's look at how we can calculate those materials. I'm going to start by creating some cross sections. Now we don't have to have cross sections in order to compute materials. I'm just going to create these so we can use them as a way to visualize the materials that are computed. I'll start by changing my drawing scale to 1 inch equals 10 feet because I would like the horizontal scale of these sections to be 1 inch equals 10. I will then go to the Home Ribbon tab and then I will open the Section Views menu and I'll choose Create Multiple Views. In the wizard, the majority of my settings are assigned with my template, so I'm going to click Next and accept the default styles and ranges, group plot style and layout. I am going to change the offset range. We'll make this user specified, and I'm going to go with a 50-foot swath width to the left and to the right. This should allow me to get two columns of sections on my sheets. I'll click Next, Next, Next. Everything looks good. I'll choose Create Section Views and then I'll click to place these on screen. If I zoom in, we can see there's the line materials right there. And then as we pan around, we can see how the thickness changes. Here's where it jumps to topsoil, it's a little thicker. And if I pan over enough, right here we can see there we're into the riprap where it's one foot deep. Okay, to calculate the materials, I am going to select a sample line. From the contextual ribbon, I will choose Group Properties. And in the Sample Line Group Properties dialog box, I'll choose Material List. This is where I can create a material list representing the materials I'd like to extract. I'm going to choose Add New Material, and I will call this first one Topsoil. We'll create another material. I'll call this one Riprap, and then I'll create another one, and we'll call this Seeded Grass. Now I'm using the same material names here as the shape codes that we are using in the corridor. We don't have to. The names that we see here will be the names that show up in our report that we extract in a little bit. As long as I'm here, I'm going to name the material list. I'll click twice to get access to the text, and I'll call this Daylight 
materials. So now that I've created those material names, I need to point them at the shape codes they're going to be extracting. We'll start with topsoil. For quantity type, this is going to be a structural volume. It will be based on a shape in the corridor. So I'll choose structures. And then which shape do I want to use? I'll open this menu and choose corridor shape. And then I will open this menu to the right. And here I can see all of the closed shapes associated with this corridor. I'll choose the topsoil shape and I will add. Finally, I will select a shape style. This is essentially the hatch pattern that's going to be assigned to this shape in the cross section view. I have created a style here called topsoil. Basically, it's a solid fill hatch. It'll be brown. I'm going to come down to riprap. This will be a structural volume. And I would like to use the riprap shape code. We'll add that. And then for the shape style, I'm going to choose riprap. I believe that style is solid fill and it's light blue. And then the seeded grass is going to be a structural volume. We'll go with the seeded grass shape code that we used. I'll add that one. And then for the shape style, I will choose seeded grass. When I'm finished, I'll click OK. And the materials have been computed. Let's take a look at the cross sections. As you can see, when volumes are computed, Civil 3D hatches the computed areas using the selected shape styles. These hatch patterns provide a great visual cue that reinforces where volumes were calculated. If I drag this up, we can see where we get into the topsoil. And if I drag this over, we can see where we're in an area of riprap. To view the volume calculations, I'm going to come back down and select a sample line. From the contextual ribbon, I'll choose Generate Volume Report. So looking at my Randall Road alignment, using my Randall Road sample line group, and my daylight materials, I'm going to choose a style sheet. I'll choose this out-of-the-box style called Select Material and click Open. Basically, it will use this style sheet to organize and extract the data from our material list. I'll click OK. I will then click Yes to accept the scripts. And here in the web browser, we can see a listing of our materials on a section-by-section -section basis, both the area and the included volume. In the far right column, we can see the cumulative volume. So if I drag this all the way down to the bottom, we can see the cumulative volume of all three materials for the specific area of the roadway that we're working with. When I'm finished reviewing the calculations, I will close the report, and then I'll double-click the mouse wheel to view my entire drawing on screen. So the next time you need to calculate material volumes associated with daylighting, take a look at the Place Lined Material option. Simply adjusting this toggle provides up to three custom materials having unique depth and slope controls, and it's all available using the out-of-the-box subassemblies that come with Civil 3D. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by following the URL listed below.